That's drunk. Hello, let's take a look at some more improvement patches for some Super Nintendo games, or quality of life patches as they're sometimes referred to. Now, improvement patches just tweak things here and there, no major overhauls, just fixes that keep the game itself largely the same. For example, in previous videos I've talked about the SA1 patch that you can use for both Gradius 3 and Contra 3, and it eliminates pretty much all the slowdown in each game. It doesn't even need to be that significant, for example in Part 2 I talked about a patch that fixed how Mario rebounded from breaking blocks in Super Mario All-Star. To get these to work, follow the corresponding link for each patch in the video description, download the file, and use a utility program like Beat or Lunar IPS to join together the patch file with the game ROM. If you need help troubleshooting, there's people on the ROM hacking forums that can help you out. First I want to talk about MSU1 patches. I've talked about these before in a previous video, but I'll mention them again real quickly. MSU1 files enable you to replace the original SNES soundtrack with CD quality sound, so you can do stuff like this. You can play everything from Chrono Trigger, Killer Instinct, Link to the Past, Final Fantasy VI, all sorts of different games, and have them set to high quality arrangements. This patching method works with emulators like SNES 9X, BSNES, Hygen, as well as the SD2 SNES flash cartridge, and the Super NT supports it as well, just enable the EXT sound option. Now, just my opinion, I'm not that crazy about this stuff because it just sounds too out of place, especially when paired with the original SNES sound effects, but still, it's a really cool feature, plus you can even include full motion video in there as well. Check this out. Link! We are done for the day. Let's head home. All right, Uncle. Yeah, it's pretty amazing stuff that you can pull off. Credit to Bew for the MSU1 patch, and credit to the guys at Zeldix for the full motion video footage. Just the right color and shine. Here's one I really wish existed back in the day, it's for Link to the Past, and all this patch does is map the L and R buttons to allow you to switch weapons without having to press start every time. This always drove me nuts about this game. I mean, the L and R buttons aren't even used, and this seemed like a really obvious thing to implement. I will say, once you collect a lot of items, it can be a pain to find what you're looking for, but in the first half of the game, it's a really nice feature to have that saves a bit of aggravation. Credit Kazuto for their work on this one. Here's another quality of life patch that I really found useful for Zombies Ate My Neighbors. All it does is allow you to cycle through your items both from left to right and right to left. Just hold down the L button while scrolling. This is really nice to have because Zombies Ate My Neighbors is obviously one of those games where you have to react quickly to all sorts of chaos happening around you, so having those extra split seconds really pay off. This is one of those features that were already made available in ROM hacks like Oh No More Zombies Ate My Neighbors and Brutal Zombies Ate My Neighbors, so it's nice that it's available on the vanilla edition. It should be noted that this patch will work with the popular Bloody Disgusting edition of the game as well. Credit goes to Stanley Decker and Sloat for their work here. Killer Instinct also has a useful patch available. It allows the final boss idol to be a playable character right at the character select screen without having to put in a code. Normally to unlock idol, you had to go to the versus menu and select Cinder. Then on the screen before the fight, you hold right and press L, R, X, B, Y, and A. Kind of annoying. But with this patch, you don't have to do any of that, and idol is really fun to play as since he's ridiculously quick and strong as hell. I mean, of course he is. He's a freaking demon, two-headed cyclops monster thing with a huge weapon. The guy is ridiculously overpowered. Thanks to Justin3009 for their work on this one. Lufia and the Fortress of Doom has a restoration patch that's a must-have if you want to play through this game today. As most of you know, Lufia 2 is actually a prequel, but if you play that game before the first Lufia, there's a few continuity issues that come up here and there, and this patch fixes those problems. There's also tons of additional touches here that make this game a much better experience, like fully restored item names and descriptions, translation fixes, being able to walk much faster on the world map to avoid random battles, as well as everything carried over from the Decensored patch, like having alcohol served at bars instead of cider. The first Lufia game is still a bit rough around the edges, but this patch helps polish it up a bit. Thanks to D and Vivify93 for their work here. 
Since we talked Lufia 1, we might as well go over Lufia 2 as well, and the Fru Lufia patch. This one provides a full script update that removes any censorship, in addition to some minor rebalancing when it comes to a couple items, IP attacks, and a couple elemental changes to enemies. It also fixes all sorts of glitches from the original game, everything from backgrounds to equipment menu wonkiness, to the weird submarine shrine glitch that completely screwed up the map. All of that stuff is fixed, and credit to Artemis and Relinquished for their work on this one. Sticking with RPGs, Final Fantasy VI has a ton, and I mean a ton of patches, that fix or change various things, and there's a couple I liked in particular that I wanted to point out. One is the learnable Rage patch that changes the way Gao learns rages. You don't have to go to the Velt and do the jump thing and hope he comes back and all that. Gao can now learn any available rage anywhere. It's not much, but I thought it was pretty nice not having to bother with the usual process. Another patch I linked is referred to as the Sword Tech Ready Stance, referring to Cyan's Sword Tech Charge. Normally when you use this, you're stuck sitting there waiting for the charge to hit the ability you want, but with this patch, you can put the charge in the background, so to speak, and manage your party and select stuff for other characters while the charge is still going on. Again, this is just a user-friendly patch that makes better use of the player's time. Thanks to Hatsen08 for both of these, and I should mention that you can use both of these patches on the same ROM if you'd like. Here's one for one of my favorite games, Super Ghouls and Ghosts. It's called Super Arthur. Now, in part one of this series, I talked about the restoration patch for this game that eliminated a whole bunch of slowdown from this game, which really helped make it more playable for a lot of people, but I still got some comments saying, yeah, that doesn't really help. Super Ghouls and Ghosts is still ridiculously difficult. Well, with the Super Arthur patch, you can pair it with the restoration patch, and you'll find the difficulty a lot more forgiving. Now when you get hit, you go back to your previous armor, so if you're wearing gold, you go back to the green armor. Green goes back to silver, and so on. You also get to keep each weapon you find, and you can select between them using the L and R buttons. That's pretty cool. Your shield is also able to withstand a bit more damage, and it doesn't break right away. So yeah, if you find Super Ghouls and Ghosts too difficult, try it with both the Restoration Patch and the Super Arthur Patch. It's well worth it. Thanks to Lufia and SCD, respectively, for their work on those patches. Another favorite of mine that's received some good improvement patches is Super Castlevania 4. First, there's a patch that restores all the stuff that was censored in the Western localization, like all the crosses in the background, blood instead of green slime in level 8, even updating the font. You can combine this patch with a really useful patch titled Don't Move. This allows you to use any unused or unmapped button to hold Simon Belmont still, so when you hold a direction down on the D-pad, he'll actually stay still instead of inching forward or backward while whipping. Yeah, I know Simon is already overpowered as hell, especially when compared to previous Castlevania games, but still, this is one of those common sense patches that feels like it always should have been there from the get-go. Credit Shadow1333 and Rain Poncho respectively for these two patches. Here's one of the very best patches out there, not specifically for Super Double Dragon, but for the Super Famicom version of the game, Return of Double Dragon. It's a collection of hacks made by Kensho, and combined, they really make the gameplay a lot smoother. Billy and Jimmy's attacks are now two frames faster, the dragon power meter charges a bit faster, you block by holding the R button, and you can hold the button down to block instead of it being a matter of timing, and it really can't be overstated how much more smoothly the game plays with these improvements. It was definitely evident that the initial release of this game was rushed, and the gameplay suffered a bit because of it, and this patch cleans up a lot of the issues, and it's easily the best way to play Super Double Dragon today, or in this case, Return of Double Dragon. Finally, I want to end this video by mentioning the HD Mode 7 again, available on the BSNES emulator, only because I wanted to mention a specific game that not that many people know about. Yes, this mode works great for everything from Pilot Wings, F-Zero, Super Mario Kart, and Contra 3, and even Super Castlevania 4 and Secret of Mana, but there's one puzzle game out there called On the Ball, where you rotate the screen using the D-pad to get a ball to fall through a maze. As is, just playing on a regular old Super Nintendo, the game is okay, if not a bit disorienting. I can't help but get a little dizzy playing this, but if you're able to play this while utilizing HD Mode 7, the game is way more player-friendly because you're able to see that much more of the maze, so you can relax your eyes a bit. It's a good example of a game where this enhancement took it from just okay to worth checking out. Alright, I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.